Church of the Cross and our online worship experience. Whether this is the first time you're joining us or you've been here numerous times before, we believe it is no accident that you're here today. At Lutheran Church of the Cross, we believe in practical faith, faith that can make a difference in every day of your life. If you're looking for ways to connect with us throughout the week, we encourage you to follow us on our Facebook page. Each day at 3 p.m., Monday through Friday, members of our staff will join you on Facebook to offer some words of encouragement through devotion or music. It's a great opportunity for you to connect throughout the week and get some encouragement. As we begin our worship service today, I pray that you sense God's presence with you wherever you are and that you are encouraged to dig into practical faith. Please join me as we begin by opening our service with prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for who you are. Thank you for this day and this time we have to worship you. Even though we are not able to gather physically, we are still united in our worship. What a joy it is to praise you. As we sing, let our song be a joyful noise to you. As we pray, may our words and thoughts be pleasing to you. As we open your word, may we be reminded of your unfailing love and faithfulness. You are a God who keeps his promises. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may see you more clearly today. We also thank you for mothers. What a tremendous calling you have put on the hearts of mothers. We know that while this day is joyful for many, it can also be difficult, and we pray for comfort and peace for those who need it now. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. We'll continue with the time of worship, beginning with the song led by our kids. Gonna shout, gonna shout, come on, gonna shout before the altar of the Lord, let's shout, gonna shout, gonna shout, gonna shout before the altar of the Lord, won't be afraid. Gonna dance, come on, let's see those dance. Gonna dance, there you go. Gonna dance before the altar of the Lord. One more time. Gonna dance, gonna dance. Dance before the altar of the Lord. We are going to enter a time of worship here. We're going to lift our voices, declare God's goodness and faithfulness, and sing, I will follow. So let's sing this together. When the sea 
his calm and all is right. When I feel your favor flood my life, even in the good I'll follow you. Even in the good I'll follow you. When the boat is tossed upon the waves, when I wonder if you'll keep me safe, even in the storms I'll follow you. Even in the storms I'll follow you. Sing it out together. I believe. I believe everything that you say you are. And I believe and I have seen your unchanging heart in the good things and in the hardest part. I believe and I will follow you. I believe and I will follow you. see the wicked prospering, when I feel I have no voice to sing, even in the ones I'll follow you, yes, even in the ones I'll follow you, oh, and I believe everything that you say you are, and I believe and I have seen your unchanging heart in the good things and in the hardest part. I believe and I will follow you. I believe and I will follow you. When I find myself so far from you lead me somewhere I don't want to go even in my death I'll follow you yes even in my death I'll follow you when I come to end this race I've run and I receive the prize that Christ has won I will be with you in paradise. Oh, I will be with you in paradise. I believe everything that you say you are. I believe I have seen your unchanging heart in the good things and in the hardest part. And I will follow you. I believe and I will follow you. Sing it one more time. Come on. Yeah. Oh, and I believe everything that you say you are. And I believe and I have seen your unchanging heart in the good things and in the hardest part. And I believe and I will follow you. And I will follow you. Amen. Amen, Lord. We will follow you. Lord, return to you even now. Your holy word, your, your holy scripture, Lord. And speak to us now through that as we enter a time of scripture reading. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that this met with the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Festival of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover, so Peter was kept in prison. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. 
Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone into the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off of Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to an iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. growing up, I remember coming down from my bedroom in the morning and seeing my dad on the couch with his Bible open and spending time in prayer. And seeing that again and again left a mark on my life. So much so that these mornings you'll find me on this couch with my Bible open and spending time in prayer. I'll start by reading a passage of scripture and asking God, what are you saying to me today through this? And then I'll use my prayer journal. I find that writing out my prayers helps keep me focused and my thoughts from wandering here and there. I spend time praying over my day and praying for my family and praying for you all. Now I want you to know this. God wants to have a great friendship with you. God wants to have great communication with you at the beginning of your day and throughout your day. And this kind of friendship, this kind of communication demands trust. The early church ran into a situation that tested their trust in God. Here's what happened. Acts chapter 12 verse 1. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. Whoa. I can't imagine what the impact must have been on the early church, seeing some of their friends being imprisoned, persecuted, and James put to death. I mean, if I'm in their shoes, that would make me so discouraged and so confused because I'm sure those early church members were praying for James, for his safety, for his protection, for his deliverance. And yet it didn't happen. James was put to death. Man, if I'm in their shoes, I'm thinking, God, where were you? Why didn't you save him? Why didn't you answer our prayers in the way we wanted them to be answered? What is going on here? And maybe some of them even thought about giving up on prayer or even giving up on God. I think that's the temptation for us too. When life doesn't go the way we want it to go and when in prayer we don't get the things that we think we should get, it can be really discouraging, really confusing. And there's that temptation just to give up on prayer. Or even more so, to give up on God. And so what do we do in times like this that are dark, that are confusing, where we're feeling like giving up on prayer and maybe even giving up on God? Christian author and speaker, Corey Ten Boom knew what it was like to live through dark and confusing times, including having lived through the Holocaust. 
And she said this. When a train goes into a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away your ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the engineer. In other words, when life is confusing and your prayers aren't being answered in the way you want them to be, you don't throw away your faith. You don't give up on prayer. You don't give up on God. You sit still and trust the engineer knows where he's going. You see, we aren't able to see the end of the tunnel, but God is already there. And he knows and he understands. And our ability to understand God does not need to determine our ability to pray to God. See, God says in the book of Isaiah, my, as, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In other words, God says, I love you, and I created you with a magnificent brain, but you are simply incapable of understanding all my ways and all my plans and all my purposes. You can't see the end of the tunnel, but I'm already there, and I know where I'm leading you. And so when we come to a dark tunnel, our job is not to understand or to even see the end. Our job is to sit still and trust the great engineer. So now, back to the story. James had just been put to death. Here's what happens next in verse 3. When he, King Herod, saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. And so Peter's in prison, and it seems like maximum security prison. Sixteen soldiers are assigned just to him. He's not going anywhere. You see, what happened to James is going to happen to him. It's like a done deal. Seems like a hopeless situation. But here's else what's going on here. Verse 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. I love that phrase. But the church was praying. In the midst of that seemingly hopeless situation, the church was still praying. Still mourning for the loss of their beloved James, the church is still praying. In the midst of circumstances they probably really didn't understand, they were still praying. They didn't give up on prayer. They didn't give up on God. They sat still, kept praying, and trusted the great engineer. And in doing so, they saw the light break through. Here's what happens next in verse 6. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and centuries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the, in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. And then the angel led him into freedom. The light broke through. The church didn't give up on prayer. They didn't give up on God. They sat still, kept praying, and trusted the great engineer through the tunnel. I don't know what 
kind of dark or confusing situation you may find yourself in today. But I want you to know there is hope because the church is praying, because you can be praying. There are all sorts of dark tunnels that we come to in life, but there is always hope because the church is praying. Oh sure, we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic right now, but there's hope because the church is praying. Maybe you feel like your marriage is going through a difficult time, but there's hope because the church is praying. Maybe you feel like you have no more patience for your kids, but there's hope because the church is praying. Maybe you feel like you are so overwhelmed with your finances, but the church is praying. Maybe you feel like you have no idea how to have a relationship with Jesus, but there is hope because the church is praying. There are all sorts of dark tunnels that we go through where we might not see the light at the end at all, but the church is praying and therefore there is hope. And you are the church. It doesn't say the pastor was praying or the special leaders were praying. No, it says the church was praying. You, me, all of us together, we're the ones that get to pray. And so let's be that church who stands in the face of darkness and says, yes, I see it, but we're praying. Let's be that church that doesn't give up on prayer that doesn't give up on God, but that sits still, keeps praying, and trusts the great engineer. You know, life does throw all sorts of dark tunnels at us. And sometimes we don't know where they're going, and we don't know the end. But we know the great engineer. We know that he is trustworthy, and we know that he knows where he's leading us. And so let's be that church that's, that trusts our friend, the great engineer, to lead us because he knows where he's going. time now to pray, specifically lifting up the mothers in our lives on this Mother's Day weekend. And just as we heard, we don't always understand how prayer works, but it's a powerful thing when as a church we can trust in God's goodness, power, and faithfulness. So would you please pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we trust you. We trust that your presence is with us even now and that you hear us when we pray. Lord, we thank you for the mothers and mother figures in our lives. Thank you for how they loved, sacrificed, and taught us. We now take a moment of silent prayer to remember our own mothers and mother figures, to give thanks and pray for those who have blessed our lives. Father, we lift up mothers who are feeling tired, frustrated, or hopeless. We specifically lift up those who are now homeschooling, those who have lost income and are searching for work, and those who reside in care facilities with restricted visits. We now take a moment to silently lift up mothers who are on our hearts, who are struggling during this time. Merciful Lord, we also pray for those for whom Mother's Day is a difficult time, for those who have lost their mothers, for those mothers who have lost children, and for those who have struggled with infertility. 
We ask for your peace, hope, and comfort for those with sorrow in their hearts and take a moment to pray for them now. God, we praise you for the care and nurturing you show towards your people. And we thank you today that you have given that same spirit to our mothers. We trust in your faithfulness and we pray that you would continue to make us resilient and persistent in our prayers. We lift all these things to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as we continue our service with the time of worship, I encourage you to lift your voices in praise.
excited about the things that we are able to do, not only through Lutheran Church of the Cross, but back out into our community and around the world through our ministry partners. If you're interested in making a contribution, please see the screen now for various ways in which we can accept your donations at this time. As we conclude our service, there will be a couple reflection questions on the screen. We encourage you to take time to discuss those with your family or even journal about them as a way to put into action what you've heard today. And now as we go out into our communities, out into our homes, we encourage you to go boldly, go courageously, and go and be the church because God is with us. <laughs>